This video is the third in the series of videos that shows you how to set up a virtual Windows computer in the cloud using Amazon Web Services. In this third video, we focus on getting connected to that instance. What you're looking at on my screen here is a table of all of the instances that I have running. And the instance that we created last time is this one that we named instance number one. That's the very last one in this table. This table looks a little different than it did when I finished up the last video because some of the other instances that I have running have either been deleted or renamed. If you're doing this for the first time, you should only have one instance in this table, and that's the one that we created during the last video. Now, in case you have navigated away from this table and don't know how to get back, I want to show you that very quickly here. When you log into Amazon Web Services, you will normally end up at the console home, which contains links to all of the services that Amazon offers. Creating these virtual computers is done using the EC2 service, so we'll go ahead and click on that link. And when you click on that link, you end up at this summary page um, that shows you how many instances you have running and so on. We actually use this page to create our instance at the beginning of the last video using this blue launch instance button. But to get to the console that shows you about all of your instances, you're going to want to look to the left here under the Instances category and click on the Instances link, and that will take you back to the table. Now before we actually go ahead and connect to the instance, I want to remind you of a couple of other things we did uh, last time. In particular, under the uh, folder for the course, I created a special folder which I called instance data where I'm going to save information about these instances. Uh, in particular, in the process of creating the instance, we were prompted to download a file relating to our key pair and we saved that file in this instance data folder uh, under the name instance one key bear pair.pem, P-E-M. I also suggested that you create an Excel file to store all of the information about the instances. We're not really thinking here that we're only going to create one of these virtual computers, but we're probably going to actually create many of them over time, and we want to uh, make sure that we can keep everything straight. So I suggested that you create this Excel file and in this Excel file store information about the instance. For example, we stored its name, instance number one, its unique Amazon Web Services ID, uh, its uh, DNS name, which is like the, the name of the, of the website or the computer. So uh, this DNS name is, is a little bit complicated here, but it's playing the same role that, for example, uh, Google.com does for Google. Uh, it's the name of the address that takes you to that computer. Here's the corresponding IP address that these names get translated into. And in a minute, we're going to fill in the login, which is uh, administrator is the name of the login. And we're going to go ahead and need uh, the password as well. So we created this file and saved the information into it and downloaded the PEM file into this folder called instance data. So now I'm going to go back to the table of instances and very quickly show you where that information came from. The public DNS name is in this column right here, and the IP number is in the, the column that's next to it. The unique instance ID is right over here in the second column. So that's where that data came from. So now we're ready to connect to our instance. And to do that, the first thing we have to do is select the instance, and then we can click on the Connect button. And when you click on the Connect button, you're going to get this dialog pop up. And the first thing it's going to do is offer for you to download the remote desktop file. So we're going to go ahead and click on that button and download that file. 
and we need to save it in the same folder or I recommend that you save it in the same folder that you are saving all of the other information about the instances. Now when you click download you may get a different folder but I'm assuming you're going to be able to navigate to the folder where you saved the previous data. The uh, remote desktop file will be automatically named using the IP number of that computer and I think it's probably a good idea to change that to the same name uh, that you used for the computer so this is instance um, number one dot RDP and I'm gonna go ahead and then save that so in my instance data folder I now have three files I have the PEM file I have the Excel file where I'm going to keep information about all the instances that I create and I'm going to have this remote desktop file, the RDP file, which I have named instance number one. Now, uh, going back to this dialog that popped up where we downloaded the remote desktop file, I also get information about connecting and it gives me the username administrator and I've already put that into the database and then it gives me a button that says get password well I need my password so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it will come up with a dialog here that says that this instance was created with a key pair name called instance one key bear pair dot pem and what it's gonna ask me to do is to retrieve that file so I'm gonna go down here to this button that says choose file and click on that and then I'm going to navigate to this folder where I've stored all of the instance data and I'm going to select the file that says instance one key pair dot pem and go ahead and click open now when I open that it's going to load a private key into this text box that's right here and this is a very long thing so uh, as you can see from the slider over here it's only showing you part of it so um, even if you were to try to write down and type all this stuff you couldn't steal the password here but I'm going to go ahead and click decrypt password and it gives me the automatically generated password for um, the account okay and it's a complicated thing here so I'm gonna click on that until it's completely selected and then hit control C to copy it on the keyboard and then I'm going to go put it in my database for the instance so I'm going to go ahead and, and click under password here and do control V and so now I have saved the administrator the login name administrator and the corresponding password and I'm going to save out the Excel file by hitting control S on the keyboard so now I can go back to my um, window here and close it because I'm finally ready to connect to the virtual computer that we have created. So go, go ahead and close that. And then I'm going to open up the folder where I have the instance data. And I can connect to this computer by double clicking on the remote desktop file, which will launch remote desktop automatically and then connect me um, to the computer. So I just double clicked on it and uh, I'm gonna get a warning um, box come up of the, the software has unknown publisher but I don't care about that. Go ahead and click connect. And now I have the um, window where I need to uh, enter my credentials so it's already loaded up that the user is administrator so I need to go ahead and put in the password. So I'll pull up my database file I will select the cell where the password is, click Control C to copy it, go back to my remote desktop program here which is uh, represented by this icon in the in the taskbar and then I'm going to do Control V to paste in that password and then I can go ahead and click OK and I get another warning box about certificates but again um, I don't really need to worry about that right now so I'm just going to go ahead and click yes to connect and I'm going to wait for a little bit here and what will happen is I get connected to my virtual computer in the cloud. Now it's possible that your screen will not look exactly like mine does and I don't want you to worry about that right now. What I want to show you is how to get back to your regular computer. 
Now in clicking on the RDP file, we have run Microsoft Remote Desktop Connection. And it has essentially taken over your screen as though the screen is connected directly to the remote computer. This little tab at the top is really the only thing that shows you that you're connected to a computer in the cloud rather than to your own computer. And you can use the buttons on this tab in order to move back and forth between your remote instance and your local computer. So for example, if I click on the button that takes things from full screen to windowed, you'll see that your connection to your instance is now in a window like a regular program. I can of course now use the same button to restore it to full screen, or I can use the minimize button to put the remote desktop connection on the taskbar, revealing my regular computer in its normal fashion. Now to return to my Windows instance at Amazon Web Services, I can just click on the remote desktop connection icon in the taskbar. And then I'll get the screen that has this blue tab at the top, which is telling me that I'm connected to a computer in the cloud using remote desktop connection. And this tab at the top can be slid around in case it's obscuring something on the screen of the remote instance. Now if you have never used Windows 8, the screen that we're looking at will be unfamiliar to you. In Windows 8, the idea of the start menu from Windows 7 has been replaced by a start screen. And instead of folders and text-based links to launch the programs, there is a graphical interface with tiles, which is intended to be much more intuitive for touchscreen-based computers. So I want to give you a very brief introduction to Windows 8 so that you can accomplish the basic tasks that you need to accomplish. And the first thing that I want to address is how to move back and forth between this start screen and the desktop. Down at the bottom here you'll see that there's a tile for the desktop and you can move to the desktop by clicking it. But the easiest way to move back and forth between the start screen and the desktop is to use the Windows key. So I want to make sure that we're absolutely clear as to what the Windows key is. So I have on my screen a picture of the Windows key. It's just the key with the Microsoft Windows logo on it. And so when I talk about pressing the Windows key, this is the key that I mean. So now I'm back at the desktop of my Windows instance at AWS. And if I press and release the Windows key, I'll move to the start screen. If I press and release the Windows key again, I will move back to the desktop. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the key to move to the start screen. And I want to show you another feature of Windows 8 called Charms. If I move my arrow down into this lower right hand corner, I'll have a menu appear on the right hand side that has settings, start, and search on it. Settings will be very important because if I click on settings, I'll get a menu here that includes a power button that will allow you to disconnect from or shut down or restart your instance. To make this settings menu go away, I can just click on the start screen in some of the empty space. Now another thing you may recall from Windows 7 is that on the start menu, there was a link that showed you all programs. In Windows 8, there is now a screen for all programs, and you get there by right-clicking in a blank space on the Start screen. And this blue bar will appear at the bottom that has this button on the right-hand side for all of the apps. I should mention here that programs are no longer called programs, they're called apps. And when you click the All Apps button, what you'll see is a graphical version of the All Programs list, 
with instead of folders with links inside it, you'll get these categories such as administrative tools with tiles for the various programs within those categories. So here's a category for Amazon Web Services and so on. Not all of these are likely to show up on your screen and there's a slider bar at the bottom that you can move so that you can see all of them. To return to the start screen, you can just press and release the Windows button. So the last thing I wanted to do before wrapping up this video was to check to see how much disk space we have of the original 30 gigabytes that came with the free tier Windows 2012 instance. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the start key to switch to the desktop. And then I'm going to launch the file explorer by clicking on its icon in the taskbar. And now I'm going to click on computer in the list of folders on the left hand side and I can see that I have four and a half gigabytes free of the original 30 gigabytes that came with the instance. So in the next video I'm going to show you how to install the most important programs that we're going to need for doing data science on our Windows instance at Amazon Web Services.